Good morning, friends. I am here again for my next lecture. And today onwards, I will be taking five lectures. These lectures are from aircraft systems. And these topics are known as the definition and terminology. This definition and terminology, I will be, I have divided into five groups. Each group will have each unit. So in today's lecture, I am going to discuss about module one. The module one is introduction to aircraft systems. So in this, I will take some issues or some words or the terms which are used during my previous lectures, which are not very much explained because that time the system was important issue, but now the every word or the terms which are used in this uh, module is important. So in this lecture, I am going to discuss about these all terms which are used for the different purposes. So, as you know, I am Dr. Vaidhi Duvedi, professor from Department of Aeronautical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, India. And in my today's lecture, I am going to map course outcomes with the topics. And these are the topics which I am going to cover. Definition and terminology, CO1, then aircraft, it's definition different types of aircrafts also. Parts of aircrafts, I will be discussing different parts and their functions. Airframe systems, avionic systems and the navigation systems. These are the part of the introduction of uh, aircraft systems and I am going to take one by one in uh, my following slides. So definition and terminology. First, I am going to discuss about uh, define aircraft, what is the aircraft and how these aircrafts are uh, classified. So first word is aircraft. What is the aircraft? Any machine that can derive support in the atmosphere from the reaction of the air other than the reaction of the air against the earth surface. So any vehicle which is moving in air and due to the effect of the air, it is able to sustain. The machine which is able to go away from the earth by the help of the relative motion between the vehicle and the environment or the air that is called the aircraft. Further, we can define in another way, but the result is same. Any machine capable of flying by means of buoyancy or aerodynamic forces such as glider, helicopter or aeroplane. These are called the aircraft. Even your balloon is also aircraft because it is also by the hot gases it, it can fly on the sky. So here we have the aeroplane, the first one. Then we have one helicopter here. Then we have the balloon and this is the glider. So this is the glider. Here we have balloon. This is the helicopter. And this is the airplane. Okay, so these are the aircraft. So any machine capable of flying by means of buoyancy or aerodynamic forces such as glider, helicopter or airplane or the balloon. So these are called the aircraft. So differentiate difference between aircraft and the airplane. So what is the difference between the aircraft and the airplane? So in the previous, I have discussed about aircraft. So in this balloon is also part of the aircraft. But once we talk about airplane, then it is varying. So what is the airplane and what is the aircraft? So this we have to discuss here. An aircraft is any machine that can fly. So an aircraft is any machine that can fly. Airplane, hot air balloons, 
helicopters or even flying platforms are considered aircraft. This is all of the aircraft including the balloon. But if you see here that an airplane is a specific type of aircraft that has the fixed wing that you have to understand that has a fixed wing and is heavier than air. So in this balloon is also gone and your helicopters, gliders, all things have gone in this. That is capable of sustained power, powered and the controlled flight. So here I have shown you this is the airplane, helicopter, balloon and the glider. So in this, this and this, they don't fall under airplane group. Okay, so this balloon is lighter than air, so it is not following this one. So this we have to ensure that the what is the difference between airplane and the aircraft. So airplane is a fixed wing aircraft which is heavier than air. That is airplane. Next, name of the parts of an airplane. So in this, if you can see the important parts of are shown in this figure. If I start from here, this is the cockpit here at this point. This is the cockpit. In the cockpit, all avionic panels, instruments, flight deck instruments, and also pilots are on board. Here, command and controls are performed from this cockpit. Then this is a fuselage. The fuselage is this tubical tubes say from here to here this is the this you can see full this part this is the your fuselage so fuselage the purpose of the fuselage i am going to discuss further it accommodates the passenger cargo fuel equipment pilots everything it accommodates then i will go to slides Slides are the leading edge devices. This you can see from here to here, some black color. These are the slides from here to here. This can be made up or the down as per the requirement. Then we have the ailerons in both the wing at the tip, trailing edge of the tip. We have the ailerons this side and also this side. These are the ailerons. We have this black color here. This is the black color. This is the spoiler. I'm going to discuss this all the uh, items. So spoilers are change, lift, drag and the roll. Slat increase the lift. Aileron change the roll. Here we have the flaps. Here this black color is flat. This I can show here also. I think it is easy if I show here. So what is the cockpit. So this is the aircraft, total airplane and in this airplane, this you can see here, the from here to here is a cockpit, this part and this from here to here whole body, this tube like part is a fuselage, hold things together and carry the payload, most of the payload except fuel, lot of fuel is kept in the wing. So, hold things together, carry passenger, carry payload and all the things are carried. If you see here, we have the aileron here, ailerons, both the side we have the ailerons. These ailerons are used to change the roll. So if I, if I want to make left roll or the right roll, our aileron will go up or the down. Here we have the slide, this you can see here. some. Other color is here, from here to here, at the leading edge, we have the slate. These slates are made forward or the rearward and the pilot will have a lever in that as and when during landing and the takeoff, whenever excess lift is required, pilot will operate and it will function accordingly. So the purpose of slate is to increase the lift of the aircraft. Now further if I go, uh, here is a flap, flap is near the root of the wing in the trailing side, this side and okay, this side. So these are the flaps. The flaps are used to increase the lift and the drag. During the landing, we want more lift. 
you know more lift and the uh, lift as well as the drag so that time the angle of attack of this uh, flash will be high during the takeoff we want more lift not more drag that time the angle of this deflection of the flash will be lesser than the during the landing if you go further below and the rearward you will see here the horizontal stabilizer and this is the vertical stabilizer or the vertical fin and here we have the elevator the black color is elevator this you can see here also these are the elevators here and here also these are the elevator these elevators are used to change the pitching if you want to make nose up or the nose down if you want to make nose down you have to put down if you want to make the nose up you have to make it uh, elevator up in the same direction this is the vertical stabilizer this vertical stabilizer is used to stabilize the yaw yaw motion is stabilized by the vertical stabilizer also the rolling motion is also stabilized by the vertical stabilizer here we have the horizontal stabilizer it stabilizes the pitching motion it stabilizes the pitching motion then we have here winglets these winglets are used to decrease the induced drag then we have the wing these wings are used to give the additional lift to the aircraft the most of the lift is produced by the main wing of the aircraft then we have here one engine this you can see here i am also showing one engine here this is the engine and this engine here and here two engines are there so these are the some important part of any airplane and i think i am going to discuss in uh, next slides about the other things so now i am going to discuss about the stabilizer first so what are the stabilizer and how these things are working this i am going to discuss in this uh, class so here we have the horizontal stabilizer these are the horizontal it is shown here if I, I can show here also so this is the horizontal stabilizer so the horizontal stabilizer at the rear these things are at the rear of the fuselage very extreme rear so that we can get more leverage more the moment on so the cg is here so this distance is force is developed by this and multiplied by this we will get pitching pitching moment so that is why we put at the extreme end and this part is known as the impedance so at the rear of the fuselage of the most aircraft one find a horizontal stabilizer here and an elevator so here with the horizontal stabilizer you can see that we have the one elevator the stabilizer is a fixed wing section whose job is to provide stability for the aircraft so this purpose of the stabilizer is to provide the longitudinal stability means pitching stability so to provide stability for the aircraft to keep it flying straight otherwise nose will go like this like this so if you want to make flight like this straight i have to make sure that the horizontal stabilizer is producing such amount of lift forces so that nose is maintained straight otherwise passenger if they are sitting here and they are like this they all will go back and if it is the nose down it will be forward so it is very important especially for the passenger aircraft or the commercial aircraft that your aircraft should be in a horizontal position whenever it is cruising landing and take off is okay it is for few minutes but as and when you reach to your cruise height or the cruise altitude aircraft should not do like this like this otherwise this will create lot of discomfort and also the fuel consumption will be high the time taken to reach to the destination will be more and lot of problems will be there so horizontal stabilizer these are the horizontal stabilizer these stabilizers are playing a very uh, important role for making aircraft horizontally stable so that is why the name of these things are given the horizontal stabilizer second very important part 
is here vertical stabilizer it is shown here these are the vertical these are the vertical stabilizer so here and here we have the rudder also so in this two parts we have here also if you see the elevator also it is not a one piece it is a two piece item so we can uh, if one is not working another can work and your system uh, will be function so that is the purpose of this thing this is the tail part of the fuselage tail part of the fuselage and it is called empennage empennage so this horizontal and the vertical stabilizers are placed at the empennage of the aircraft so what is the vertical stabilizer the stabilizers job is to provide stability for the aircraft to keep it flying straight the vertical stabilizer keeps the nose of the plane from swinging from side to side which is called the yaw so this vertical stabilizers are used to stabilize yaw motion however it is also used for rolling during your rolling also it is uh, stabilizing because just i will explain here so this red color is vertical stabilizer and here we have the rudder so if aircraft is flying like this and the nose is not properly it is moving like this like this like this so your vertical stabilizer make sure that as and when it is moving like this it will pull like this so aircraft will be always in the yawing also it will be straight so for the longitudinal for the yawing and also the rolling so once the aircraft is rolling this will also affect because as it is rolling like this it will keep on going so here a, a additional force it will generate and it will again it will keep in the stable condition so the purpose of vertical stabilizer not only for the yawing it is also stabilizing for the rolling also so it is a working for a lateral and the directional static stability it is performed by the vertical stabilizer also there is a rudder this rudder makes sure that the motion of the aircraft is going in the left or the right next very important part is here is the reference this one and here also the i have taken from this website this is the reference which is given here so this is the reference which i have given so what is the wing if you can define the wing actually this wing is the main part which generate the lift of the aircraft and it is in aerofoil shape so wing in aeronautics and airfoil that helps lift a heavier than aircraft heavier than aircraft when positioned above the fuselage it is called the high wing wing provides an unrestricted view below and good lateral stability parasol wings placed on strut high above the fuselage of the uh, seaplane helps keep the engine from water spray so if you see here that the wings are the main component and it is made of the air foil this is the section of this thing is the air foil if you see here these are the main wing and this is the main wing from this side and the, the this side they are producing the most of the lift they may have the high wing if these wings are put here it is high wing and here if you see it is a low wing aircraft so there is a some difference between the low wing and the high wing and if you are a seaplane which is landing on water we cannot use a low wing because if it is in the low wing you cannot this water will be touching and your flying will not be proper to avoid that we should make sure that for the different configuration of the aircraft we need the location of the wing also in the different places and accordingly we have to work a wing is a type of fin that produce lift while moving through air or some other fluid according accordingly wings have a streamlined cross section 
that are subjected to aerodynamic forces and acts as airfoil. A wing <coughs> aerodynamic efficiency is expressed to its lift to drag ratio. So, like this, the wing, the efficiency of the wing is compared with the lift to drag ratio, L by D ratio. And this L by D ra ratio makes sure that the aircraft is efficient or inefficient. If the L by D ratio or the lift to drag ratio is high, the wing is deemed to be a very good and very efficient for the operation. Next, define the fuselage. So, the main body where things are accommodated, the pilot, the passenger, the crew, the equipments, your baggage, everything from here to here, this part is called the fuselage. So, fuselage is the center portion of the body of an airplane designed to accommodate the crew, passenger and cargo. It varies greatly in design and size according to the function of the aircraft. In single engine aircraft, it will usually contain an engine as well. Although in some amphibious aircraft, the single engine is mounted on a pylon attached to the fuselage, which in turn is used as a floating hull. The, fus the fuselage also serves the position to control and stabilize stabilizes surfaces in a specific relationship to lifting surfaces which is required for aircraft stability and the maneuverability. So, first thing, the main and biggest part of any aircraft is the fuselage. It is the center part, this you can see from here to here in this diagram. This is the nose and this is the tail of the tail of the fuselage. Okay. So, it accommodates the crew, means passengers, pilot, air crews, air hostesses and also the material, cargo, your luggage boxes, everything. It also varies greatly, design of this thing varied. This also carries in some propeller, single engine propeller. It is fixed on the nose of the fuselage. Some are put here also here in this part also engines are engines are so few aircraft this is also accommodated the engines are also placed in different positions you can also see that the wings are also attached here and here to the fuselage only your Horizontal tail plane and the vertical stabilizers and horizontal stabilizers are also accommodated in this fuselage. So, fuel, fuselage is like your body from here to here. Same way from here to here, it is your main body and your hands, your legs, they are mounted on this. Same way, it is the heart or you can say whole capacity of your aircraft is on the fuselage only. All components are Directly or indirectly, it is attached with the fuselage. So, it is very primary and important part of any uh, aircraft. Now, next is landing gear and we know that landing gears and we should also understand about its. Uh, so, landing gear is the undercarriage of an aircraft or a spacecraft that is used for takeoff or landing. For aircraft, it is generally needed for both. So, undercarriage means it is able to carry your all the load of the aircraft or spacecraft that is used for takeoff and the landing. So, on the ground, this has to be used. For aircraft, it is generally used for the landing also and the takeoff also. It was also formally called the alighting gear. Previously, we used to see uh, call this as a alighting gear by some manufacturers such as Glenn L. Martin Company. For aircraft, Stinton makes the terminology distinctions undercarriage. This is also known as a undercarriage. It is a British language. 
undercarriage. So this landing gear is also called the undercarriage. And in US language, it is a landing gear. So if anyone is calling you undercarriage, it is British English. And in that, the landing gear is called the undercarriage. Please uh, pay attention to this word. Even my Indian Navy, I, I used to say it undercarriage, not the uh, this landing gear because in Sea Harrier, which is the British aircraft, we used to say the undercarriage, not the landing gear. Landing gear, it is uh, as and when this computer has come, people are very much aware now about the American English and they have started talking about the landing gear, like airfoil and aerofoil. This is the British. And this is the USA. In USA English, the spelling is airfoil. And but if you use the British English, you should use the aerofoil. So that is the difference between uh, these few words. So landing gear support the craft when it is not flying, allowing it to take off land and taxi without damage. So this is the um, process in which the aircraft is, uh, the landing gears or the undercarriage are supporting the aircraft. If you see here in this aircraft, so most of the time you will have the landing gear here and it is supporting like this. Two landing gear and one is at the nose. So these landing gears are the supporting elements of the aircraft. Define a spoiler. Next is very important part is spoiler and all the bigger aircraft, passenger or the cargo aircrafts are having this spoiler. These spoilers are shown here. As you can see this part from here, this is the spoiler. It is lifted up. It is made like this. So if you see here, in this part of the wing here, something will come out like this. Okay, like this is like this. So this is called the spoilers. So here also this thing it is very much clear. The, these things are lifted up from here to here. So a spoiler called a lift spoiler or the lift damper. Dumper. Dump means lift has to be reduced. So that is why it is called the lift damper is a device which intentionally reduce the lift component of an airfoil in a controlled way. So it is in the controlled way. As in when how much I want, how much pilot want during landing or during it want to reduce the height, altitude of the aircraft, that time they have to use the this spoiler and lift spoiler or the lift damper as shown in this uh, figure. Spoilers are small hinged plates on the top portion of the wing. Spoilers can be used to slow an aircraft or to make an aircraft descent. If they are deployed on both wings, spoilers can also be used to generate a rolling motion for an aircraft. If they are deployed on only one wing. So if you take that there are two sides here and here, we have this spoilers. So if I want to make both this thing, it, it will reduce the speed due to high drag and also it will reduce the lift. But if I want only one side, so here this lift will be less, here this will be more, it will also start rolling also. And also it will start yawing also. So rolling and yawing both can be done by the help of your spoiler. If one side you lift the spoiler, it will not only spoil the lift, it will also make rolling and the yawing motion of the aircraft will be performed by the help of spoiler if your rudder is not working. If rudder is there, it is not required. You do only spoiling work only. You spoil the lift. That's all. Spoiler creates a controlled stall over the portion of the wing behind it greatly reducing the lift of that wing section. So it is a controlled stall is 
performed by this spoilers. Hey, as for the pilot requirement, it will, if you want, the lift should be reduced, it will make lift up, your flow will be stalled and your aircraft will start falling down or start control weight is falling down over the portion of the, uh, and uh, as per requirement, we can do it. Now, there is a small difference between the spoiler and the air brakes. Spoilers differ from air brakes in that air brakes are designed to increase drag. So, the purpose of air brake is to increase the drag without disrupting the lift across the wing span, while spoilers disrupt the lift distribution as well as increasing the drag. So, spoilers not only spoil the lift, but also it increases the drag. But air brakes only increases the drag. So, that is the basic difference between the air brake and the spoilers. Next, very important component of the aircraft is slide. This we can see here, this is the wing. This is the, your winglet here. From here to here, this is the winglet. This is your wing. This is your airfoil of the wing. And then you can see one more airfoil is visible from here. This is from here to here. Initially, this part is stuck here. If it is not required for the normal flying, this is fixed inside and this is plain. You, you can't see that anything is here. But during the takeoff or during the landing, the pilot is want more lift. That time they have to extend outside. So here additional area is generated and the flow will, a slot will be generated. So flow will also move like this. So it will go like this. So more kinetic energy and the flow separation of the aircraft is reduced. So it increases the area. It increases the kinetic energy of the aircraft and hence it gives the more lift and more wider angle of stall or stall angle of the wing is increased. So that is the basic purpose of the slat. So this slat is extendable high lift devices on the leading edge of the wing of some fixed wing aircraft. Their purpose is to increase lift during low speed operations such as takeoff, initial climb, approach and the landing. So these are used for these four phases, takeoff, climb, during approach and also during the landing. These are the four part of the phases of the flight in which these are the four phases of the flight in which your slats are used. Slats are aerodynamic surfaces on wing leading edge. Just now I have explained you here that what is this? This aerodynamic air like aerofile. Okay, this you can see here at the leading edge. Okay, this is the leading edge of the wing. This is the leading edge and this is the trailing edge. trailing edge of the wing. So, slats are aerodynamic surfaces on winged leading edge of the fixed wing aircraft which when deployed allow the wing to operate at a higher angle of attack. A higher coefficient of lift is produced as a result of angle of attack and speed. So, by deploying slat an aircraft can fly at slower speed or take off and land in shorter distance. So, if you want that aircraft should able to take off and the land for a lesser runway length, that time also we need to deploy the slats. They are used during takeoff and the landing or while performing low speed maneuvers which may take the aircraft close to stall, they are retracted in normal flight to minimize the drag. So, 
this is also generating some drag also for the normal flight we don't use this slide but if you want to do some maneuver at a low speed you want to take off and the landing uh, in a low speed that time you have to extend it and that time it is very useful so this uh, slides are mostly available in most of the passenger aircraft uh, all commercial boeing and airbus they have the slides on the wings next i have to discuss about empennage so empennage is the rear part this you can see here this is it is shown here which is carrying the horizontal stabilizer this is the horizontal stabilizer with elevator and this is the vertical stabilizer vertical stabilizer with rudder also this tail part from here to here here we are fixing a, a navigation light also here we are putting the black box this is the most safest part of the aircraft and so we are putting the black box here in this area or in this zone uh, one day i will try to show you the black box also uh, we have the black box with us in our lab i will try to show this thing in uh, my few lectures in this time only so define empennage the empennage is the name given to the entire tail section of the aircraft including both the horizontal and the vertical stabilizers the rudder and the elevator okay just now there is the vertical tail there is the horizontal tail there is the rudder and this is the elevator okay so these all are called the, the full combination of this thing is called the empennage so as a combined unit it works identically to the feather or the arrow helping guide the aircraft to its destination so this part is very much required to guide the aircraft for reaching to the destination so as a definition what is the dictionary meaning of this empennage so that is the i am uh, i have taken from the dictionary the tail assembly of an aircraft is called the empennage so the tail assembly which is behind this you can see here here is the fuselage this is the nose and this is the tail this part is the tail and this part is the nose so horizontal stabilizer vertical stabilizer elevator rudder they all are here and this part from here to here is called the empennage so the tail assembly of an aircraft is called the empennage which consists of horizontal stabilizer with elevator vertical stabilizer with rudder and also some navigation light here some other items are fixed even some passengers are also placed at this rear or the tail part of the this aircraft so this is called empennage so here i have shown the boeing 747 uh, is a large non range long range wide body airliner designed and manufactured by the boeing commercial airplane in the united states after introducing to 707 in october 1958 pan am wanted a jet two and half times its size to reduce its seat cost by 30% to demarketize air travel in 1965 this aircraft was developed okay so that is a small history of this uh, aircraft now define the control surfaces so control surfaces here this elevators are here at the empennage rudder is here these are the rudder i think this is not visible some color is very faint rudder elevator and this is the aileron so these are the three main control surfaces a movable airfoil designed to change the attitude of an aircraft the control surfaces are 
all the dynamic part of an aircraft that can be manipulated to steer the plane during flight. They are divided into primary and the secondary control surfaces. The primary ones on a fixed wing aircraft include the aileron, elevator and the rudder. These are responsible for the uh, directing the aircraft. Movement of any of these three primary control surfaces that is aileron, elevator or the rudder changes the airflow and the pressure distribution over and around the airfoil. So we have the main three primary control surfaces, elevator which makes the pitching up and down, rudder which makes the yawing left or the right and the elevators, ailerons they are making the rolling of the aircraft. So that is the purpose of this flight control surfaces. So next is what is the vehicle system? Because this our unit is consist of the uh, structural system, vehicle system, avionic system and the mission system. I will try to cover up in a very fast way. So this vehicle systems means an assembly of devices combined to perform one or more specific function in a vehicle. An electronic system installed in the vehicle recording and delivering to the laser, laser the location of the vehicle, distance covered by the vehicle, vehicle used period as well as other data in relation to the vehicle and its use. It consists of electrical system, hydraulic system, pneumatic system, oxygen system, oil system, engine system and so many others. What is the avionics? So we see that modern aircrafts are equipped with lot of equipments and these equipments are operated by electronic and computer system and these are called the avionics. So the exact definition by the dictionary as well as is I have depicted here. So avionics is electronics as applied to aviation. It is a two words aviation and electronics. So this avio avionics is a combination of electronics which is applied for the aircraft, for aerospace, for missiles, for drones, for any other aerospace purpose. These equipments are called the avionics. Electronics equipment fitted in an aircraft is also called the avionics. So avionics a blend of aviation and electronics or the electronic systems used on aircraft. Avionic systems include communication, navigation, the display and the management of multiple systems and the hundreds of systems that are fitted to aircraft to perform individual function. This you can see here, it is a radar here. This is an aircraft and this you can see lot of equipments are here and these equipments are their displays shown here. It is multifunctional display, your VOR, your other equipments are here. So these are shown here as a avionics system as in when your aircraft goes modern and modern and the modern you will get number of equipments which are able to perform the better way from the previous one. So define communications. What is the meaning of the communication? Communication connect the flight deck to the ground and the flight deck to the passenger. On board communication are provided by the public address system and aircraft intercoms. The VHF aviation communication system works on the air band of 118 megahertz to 136.975 megahertz. Each channel is spaced from adjacent ones by 8.33 kilohertz in Europe and 25 kilohertz in other places. So this is the VHF communication and it is range for the Europe, it is 8.33 but in other countries we have very large range of 25 kilohertz. VHF is also used for line of sight communication such as aircraft to aircraft and aircraft to ATC. Amplitude modulation is used and the conversation is performed in simplex mode. Aircraft communication can also take place using HF especially for trans-ocean flight. If it is long range flight that time we need a 
high frequency band or satellite communication can be used for this purpose. So what is the navigation? So air navigation is the determination of position and the direction on or above the surface of the earth. Avionics can use satellite navigation system such as GPS and WAS, inertial navigation system, ground based navigation systems such as VOR and the LORAN, these are old systems, uh, very high frequency omni ranging, low local area, local area range or any combination of thereof. Some navigation system such as GPS calculate the position automatically and displays it to the flight crew on moving map display. In our aircraft, if you see, we are using the GPS, uh, global positioning system, also inertial navigation system. In this, we use the our uh, gyroscope, accelerometer and all. In that, we measure it. It is not much interferencing with any radio equipments. So it is a mechanical type of uh, systems. And we also use some ground based uh, navigation systems like VOR and the LORAN or any other uh, system. Some navigation systems such as GPS calculate the position automatically and display it to the flight crew on the map, which we all know nowadays, every mobile is having GPS and how we are getting, but this a, a aircraft, it is used from 40 years back. Okay, so it is not a new for the air aircraft. Older ground-based navigation uh, systems such as VOR or the LORAN require a pilot or navigator to plot the intersection of signals on a paper map to determine an aircraft location. Modern systems calculate the position automatically and displays it to the flight crew on moving map display. So in whenever we were using the VOR and the LORAN, that time the signals are tracked and pilot used to write in the map and they have to measure by scale and they can find out that where is the our aircraft. But nowadays this all things are done by the computer and you will get the exact location of the aircraft without any much problem. Next, very important equipment is nowadays traffic anti-collision system. So it is we have to understand and we have to also see that these systems are available in our, our aircraft and here I have shown this system that aircraft is here and you have to reach here. So if any aircrafts are here, this, this, this will show you the location of any other aircraft and height also at what location other objects are available on the screen and their colors will be also different. If it is the red means it, it is very near, yellow means it is and if it is far away, it is the green. This three aircrafts are flying in this zone. So this will very good. Uh, previously, a lot of accident used to happen, and to avoid that uh, traffic collision in air, this equipment was was developed, and it is mandatory now for all the aircrafts to have such type of equipments on board. To to supplement air traffic control, most large transport aircraft and many smaller ones use a traffic alert and collision avoidance system. It is called TCAS. So it is traffic alert and collision avoidance system, TCAS, which can detect the location of nearby aircraft and provide instructions for avoiding a mid-air Collision. So it will not only detect, it will also give suggestions, okay, which one you can follow so that your aircraft will not hit with another aircraft or another aircraft will not hit by the your aircraft. Smaller aircrafts may use simpler traffic alerting 
system such as T pass, which are passive. They do not actively interrogate the transponder of the aircraft and do not provide advisories for the conflict resolution. For smaller aircraft, they will give that the signal that yeah, some aircraft are here, but pilot will take its own action. It is called T pass. But if you see the bigger aircraft, they will give the decision also. They will give the warning. They will give if pilot is not acting automatically, your aircraft will be turned to the safe direction. But this type of systems are not available in the smaller aircraft because this system is quite costly and a small aircraft, um, th they may not be able to acquire such costly equipments. But if it is used for the flying operation of the passenger or the commercial use, uh, every aircraft has to have uh, T cost, but minimum requirement is T pass as for the size of the aircraft. The regulatory body will give the permission which type of equipments minimum required for flying the aircraft. Then only it will be cleared for the flying. So this T cost or the T pass is very essential, one of the very essential and important equipment which has to be acquired by any of the uh, operator. So these are the uh, today's class I have discussed and now these are the references which I have some part of this thing I have taken from these books Moyer and the Seabridge Aircraft Systems Mechanical, Electrical and Avionic System. Another book of the same author Moyer and the Seabridge Design and Development of Aircraft Systems and in introduction AIA education series AIA this I have used for my whole this uh, my topics any questions you are welcome to ask me I will feel very proud and I will feel very happy or well if you are asking the question you can ask the question in my this email Please also like and subscribe my channel. Give comments if any questions you want. I, I will be trying to re reply these questions. Thank you very much for the joining and I will be continuing my um, next classes also. Be tuned and always join with me. Thank you very much for joining the class. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.